Good morning, campers, and as we set ourselves up here for the start of this mission, we are back in Train Simulator 2015. Today we are driving a CSX, Chesapeake Seaboard and more. That's an SD70 MAC, MAC. Don't know what that stands for. Oof, man, my frame rate dies when I look in that direction. Don't know why that is. Very strange. Anyway, but we're luckily not going that direction. So I think that's an issue with this older route. We're actually running this in the old graphics mode because on the new graphics mode, this route does not perform very well for me. Don't know why. We'll see. As we go through this, it'll probably slow down a couple of times, especially if there's a train heading towards us that we might run into. So let's let up the brakes. This is a, another Steam Workshop scenario. That... Uh, that we have downloaded. Link to the scenario will be in the description of the video below. Since uh, a lot of people have been watching the train sim videos, so we are doing some more train sim videos. We are playing at medium settings on uh, dynamic lighting off. So, yeah, the graphics don't look great, but eh, outside looks fine. Admittedly uh, dated, but since we're on old style graphics, but it looks okay. I like that they've replaced all the rolling stock on this uh, with CSX locomotives for some reason. I guess they just wanted to uh, imagine what this route would look like if it was entirely CSX. In fact, I think they're all SD70 Max, aren't they? It looks like all SD70s. Probably didn't actually need that signal since there's already a train in the... Uh... Actually, there's already two trains going across this uh, railroad crossing. Sucks to be all. Sucks to be all. Not going anywhere anytime soon. Oh, also, apologies. Uh, there might be some stutter moments like that where the uh, the game suddenly shudders to a halt. I have the scenery uh, density at maximum because I, I there's nothing I hate more than going into a route and there's obvious things missing, like uh, signal trees, that sort of thing. bugs me to no end when something obvious like that is not present. Alright. So I, I try and, like, my target for train simulator performance is to get smooth frame rates with maximum scenery density. So that's why we're everything in, in the cab is kind of blurry. So I would rather have tons and tons of lower textured stuff out there than higher textured stuff with uh, a few with some really silly things just completely missing. Relatively old rig as far as train sim is concerned. Started playing this when it was Railworks 2. that signal very, very well. I hear it all the time because I live near two very busy, uh, well, I live within spitting distance of an extremely busy CSX line and within a couple miles of a similarly busy Norfolk Southern line. And the CSX line has two, uh, two railroad crossings on it, only a few miles from my house. So, well, my apartment, <laughs> upselling this two room thing into a uh, house. That's funny. But, um, yeah, so I hear the crossing signal all the time. You probably hear one. And most of the time, if I just am listening for it, I'll notice it happening at some point, usually a couple times an hour. It's not too bad. I do like this route. I always figured this route would be the one that I went to if I ever started working on... Uh, I, I started building a route for Train Simulator based on a local one. And uh, that was a couple versions ago. I think it was 2012. And this was always the route that I expected I would go to, because I think Ohio is probably the most similar to rural Virginia as far as scenery goes, and uh, foliage. I guess probably the Northeast Corridor route might be a little bit better. I don't know. But you, you don't get structures like that in the Northeast Corridor route, whereas that's something that I could probably find in my hometown. 
It would also let the, uh, the route be accessible to people on older machines like mine. Because the scenery is not the limiting factor here. The scenery, I've, I can run this on high as long as I'm not looking at the tracks, everything's fine. It's the, uh, the something about the track geometry and the, uh, the locomotives and, and uh, cars that my computer has trouble rendering. It's all about processor, you know? Actually, honestly, the hardest thing about doing another theme workshop scenario was finding one that wasn't made by Gary, uh, I don't know how to pronounce his last name, Dolzhal, I think, who does most of the Elfaba, uh, Elfaba workshop scenarios, which are, you know, 99% of the good Steam workshop scenarios out there. So trying to sprinkle it with others, but I expect he's probably going to be at least half of the Steam workshop scenarios I do on here. Might do a couple of stock scenarios, but I don't know that people want to watch those. So I figured this is a good, uh, like this is me hedging my bets for people watching these beyond just wanting to see me play train simulators. They, they probably want to see the level I'm playing because they might own the game themselves. Something almost archival about about this rather than just you want to hear me talk about trains for 50 minutes according to the scenario description. But no, you really just want to see this moment coming up right here. Where my frame rate crashes and another train passes us. Ooh, steel coil cars. I guess I'd like to talk about like maybe some of the things I'd like to see in more scenarios. I need to, I need to get back to trying to do these myself because I uh, I bit off way too much, uh, way more than I could chew the one time I tried to do a scenario because it was it wound up being very complicated movements on a uh, relatively new route that uh, and my computer couldn't really handle it at the time. I was on an old laptop when I was trying to do it. And, uh, it didn't work out very well. I couldn't quite wrap my head around what I needed to uh, do as far as the instructions to get the uh, get the player doing what was necessary. But, um... I don't know. This, this so far is a pretty good one. It's nice and simple, straightforward. I would have liked to see maybe a little more interaction beyond just accelerating and decelerating. Like, if I wanted to do just a guided tour of the route, I probably could have just fired this up in quick drive. But, uh, I do appreciate the number of uh, trains that I've passed so far. That's kind of a neat thing to see in scenarios. You don't get that in quick drive. So, have, seeing other people who've produced good AI trains is encouraging. And, but, like, maybe, I don't know, a red signal once in a while is interesting, or at least a yellow. Obviously, it doesn't have to involve switching at all because, you know, not every train movement involves shunting or whatever the American equivalent of that term is. I grew up on Shining Time Station. I'm going to use British terms in an American accent, but I'm sorry. No. You don't always want to be stuck. Uh, like, I, I know there's desire for just straight freight runs versus uh, switching maneuvers at either end, but, you know. Mixing it up a little is always fun. I figure I could, I could sort of specialize in the local area. Like, I don't know, um, 
I don't know how difficult it would be to do this, but one of the ideas I had is there's there's so many rail lines that um, diverge from Richmond alone that you could practically model Richmond once for one route and then build seven or eight routes from the starting point of having Richmond already done. And that might be an interesting thing to do at some point. I can dream, right? I can, and I can definitely dream. So the local area is such a rich area for railroad history, and it's never been explored in any of these games yet. I am just thinking about my own area, right here, right where I live. There is um, less than a quarter of a mile from my house, or my apartment, sorry, I did that thing again where I upsell my own dwelling into something better than it is. Less than a quarter mile from my own dwelling is an old um, seaboard coastline, sorry, seaboard airline track. Before they combined with Atlantic, they, they had a single track route right past my apartment, practically. And, uh... That uh, right-of-way is still there, the old railroad crossings, you can tell where those were. The, the rails are long gone, though. Um, and then, not much farther than that, like, actually probably about a half mile from my apartment, if you walk down the old seaboard, the old seaboard right-of-way, you can get to it much faster, um, is the modern-day CSX line, which, um, at my apartment anyway, is the... Uh, the side, it was a, a runaround track to go around Petersburg. Oh, I'm speeding. I did not see that speed change happen. But, uh, it's... I mean, that line's relatively new. Uh, I think they've been using that since it was an Atlantic coastline route. I think Atlantic built the uh, the track around Petersburg. Um, it used to just go straight through my hometown and into Petersburg, and that was actually a, a really ancient railroad that was there all the way back in the Civil War. That was the, uh, the Richmond and Petersburg Railroad. And a whole bunch of that route is the, uh, the line that CSX is still using today. That's the same right of way, anyway. Though the uh, the part that actually goes into Petersburg now is a um... oh wow my frame rate's just dying here. What is going on with this? Let's look out the other other window. Other window. There we go. Nice. Think happy thoughts. Happy thoughts. Happy thoughts. Let's look at that again. Ah! Why is that CSX train flying? So yeah, I guess if you can run this route better than I can, that is really cool. I can almost hear my processor crying. <laughs> yeah, I think it's that bridge is the, uh, the big bad for me right now. Like, let's, let's watch, as soon as the bridge is out of frame, frame rate goes up. Yeah, there it goes. And there's the perfectly smooth frame rate. So I think it's a combination of this factory off to the left and that uh, that structure back there with the, the uh, tracks on it. So let's just get the factory out of... Stop at the switches at Massillon Interchange and wait for an eastbound. Right. When is, when is that? Two miles. All right. Let my speed stay around 25 for this. I'm going to be able to stop relatively quickly. Um, but yeah, so the railroad history in my, my own area is pretty interesting. Uh, I figure I could do some fascinating stuff with um, doing routes around here. So that's something I would like to get into eventually. And I'm going to be taking inspiration from the stuff I play in this video series, probably, for that. 
I'll update y'all if I ever actually get around to making things. Probably a long way off, especially if I end up getting an Xbox One again. We're getting around 15 frames per second, looking straight ahead. It's these other locomotives, I think, that are causing most of the issue at this point. So this entire route does not handle well with uh, any time you can see a lot of track. Looking back that way is getting rough now. Oh, they're BNSF uh, locomotives. Oh, I guess those are... That's I, probably the BNSF paint job is the one that the SD70 Mac CSX is based on, isn't it? Okay. Stare at the console. Decent frame rates when you stare at the console. Ah! And just think, this was the game running well for me. Imagine what I had to work with before. Sky, also good frame rates. And we're okay again. We are past the trains. That seem to be the cause of that. That BNSF consists in particular. According to this, I'm about a mile and a half away from where I need to stop, so I need to keep an eye out. But yeah, first, first things first, I'm going to try and do the Buckingham branch. If I can't manage that, then I'll just give up there. If I do pull that off, I'm going to try and work out to the uh, the James River subdivision. And then maybe eventually from there, the Bellwood subdivision. would be nice. And then I can do some Norfolk Southern stuff around Petersburg as well. Or maybe just, like, do both the, uh... Like, go old school and do the, um... To the Atlantic coastline and seaboard airline between Richmond and Petersburg. <laughs> Just for maximum amounts of work to put in. But no, I think I think I'll stick modern so I can just use Google Earth satellite imagery for a uh, an easy guide. And of course, since I live here, I can also go and uh, actually look at the stuff, which is nice. Good reference points. I've jokingly extended the offer to Dovetail that if they ever come through here, I'd like to show them around. Just to try and get them interested in modeling this region. But they don't seem too keen on coming back here. The closest they've gotten is the, uh... The closest they've gotten is the Northeast Corridor route that stops in Philadelphia. So... Who knows? Maybe someday. So we're down to about 15 miles per hour. That's generally a good speed to be coasting at. You can stop pretty easily from this. If you suspect you're approaching a red signal, it's good to be down around 15 before you can see it. So you can stop if you need to, or just accelerate back up to line speed if the signal's not red anymore. Zooming in, looking for the signal now. About a half mile ahead, according to this. I think that's it on the right there. Yeah, that looks promising. I'm not sure I like this combined power and brake uh, lever. It's a little too easy to act. Uh, there goes the dynamic brake again, of course. A little too easy to turn that on. But, uh, what can you do? Fun locomotive, otherwise. No cab signals, though, so you can't take it on the northeast corridor. And, of course, cab signals are just plain useful in lots of situations. Assuming they work right. They don't always work right. <laughs> Scenery pop in. No big deal. Par for the course in Train Simulator. I wonder how long this actually wound up being... Yeah, I guess it's been about 15 minutes, so pretty good guess. That included the uh, low frame rate periods.
so I just need to stop before that signal. It looks like I've got a pretty small margin for where I'm supposed to stop without rolling past the uh, red signal, so this could be interesting. Let's see if I can stop on a dime here. Stopped much better than I thought it would. I think I'm close enough now. I'm gonna inch a little bit closer and let's try that. Alright. Let's do eighty percent. Brakes pressurized, signal given, traffic still stopped because of course it is. And I think that was the entire scenario. So, thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you again in the future for more train simulator videos. Hopefully fewer with the uh, crazy frame rate issues that this one had there towards the middle. Sorry about that, once again. See you all next time.